I guess for the morning, Eric Toom is a vice chairman of the MPP in the Trouble constituency. And thanks for joining me, Eric. Thanks. Okay. And also a former member of parliament for Bolsa North in the studio is uh, Timothy Awunterim Atabwadi. Nice. And good morning to you. Okay. And uh, you're contesting a position in the party, yes, the NDC. Yes, I am contesting the national deputy organizer of the mm. NDC. You, you, you've got guts, man. Certainly. Um, ah. I, I must have the guts because I've been part and parcel of the formation from the beginning right, up to now. Right. And, uh, right. We'll, we'll discuss about the NDC, especially when yeah. we know currently there's an injunction on, is it the regional elections? The regional elections mm. of the, uh, the greater Accra regional mm. elections, yeah. Okay, we'll see how that goes for you as well. But let's, uh, let's begin the discussions and um, we'll discuss the politics of the country at the latter end, MPP, NDC, subsequently. But um, uh, currently the university students um, not only are laid on, but the other public uh, universities who would now have to go to school from today. Um, classes will resume on Monday. But Eric, we're being told that they need to fill Ebola forms, etc. Uh, just to ascertain um, whether they are clean or not, uh, just as a way of screening them. Do uh, you think that's the best way to go, just because we have a congregation of various people in our public universities? Um, thank you. Um, I think that we, it, it's, it's a step in the right direction, um, obviously. And the fact that we have quite a number of uh, students coming from uh, places where we've basically found uh, Ebola, so if they are coming in, then it's important that we screen them as well. And I'm sure you can have Ghanaian students also traveling to some of these places, maybe on vacation. So uh, it's something that obviously um, is necessary for us to be able to sort of stem um, the, the disease if any, in any way any of these guys have it. Um, however, I, I'm not sure if the universities have sort of indicated to us exactly what they are going to do or if their preparedness, if it happens, it so happens that uh, some of these students have actually contracted the disease and the um, mechanisms that they've put in place to, to forestall that. So I'll be a bit uh, comfortable if we get to know exactly what they've put in place to make sure that if it so happens, uh, we'll be ready for it. Mm. Yeah, I think it's in the right direction, like my colleague said here this morning. You see, we must also be cautious of the fact that it is that, yeah, screening signs that shows likelihood of symptoms that would indicate that probably you might be having or be a carrier of the Ebola virus. And I think it's in the right direction. And not just the investors alone, but I think all over the country, within the borders and even the airports, they are doing the screening. But particularly interesting to the students is that, you know when earlier on the uh, government postponed the, the reopening, apparently to put in uh, modalities to ensure that when they come in, these uh, modalities are followed. Uh, we heard of some of our student leaders uh, making uh, uh, statements that uh, they, they were not um, uh, trusting government because the uh, government was trying to buy time because they hadn't resolved the issues between the lecturers, research and book and so on. And I was saying, wow, what sort of uh, student leaders do we have these days? Well, you think that was just a coincidence? It wasn't a coincidence at all uh, because it was that as a country we must be prepared Ebola is strange to us, and we must be prepared. We must take Not because government was buying time Not on the because time. government, because even then and now, government has been trying to negotiate their way out of the lectures. And I think uh, government has resolved the matter between the research and uh, the book allowances that government have all and uh, all and love been having the banter with mm. them. So what I'm trying to say is that at any particular time, when government puts up a policy mm. or brings out an issue to ensure that an imminent uh, Ebola pandemic like this is, is to be precautious and to pre be, uh, be, pre uh, be prepared to arrest the situation when mm. it, indeed it occurs. We shouldn't rush to write government's effort off and I think the universities are doing the right thing. Like my brother said, apart from even the foreign students who will be traveling in, we all know we've been students before, during holidays most of our students do go out to do what we call bad day in quotes to look for some money to support themselves. They would have been in that their movement contacted 
some people who have been infected and so on. So it's in the right direct mm. direction and it's for their own safety and for not just their safety, for the university community as a whole mm. and Ghana as a country. Mm. And now, now you do a lot of international travels as well, Eric, and outside the university is the subject of whether the right screening procedures have been adopted or undertaken at the country's port of entry. Not even to talk about the very lax entry points we have, which usually are also not formal, but very much uh, insipid, so to speak, very, very much porous. Would you say that then these precautions have been taken in those entry points as well? From your observation? And, and, I, and, I don't think so. I mean, the thing is that um, we all look at it from the point that it's an abstract thing. It's not happened. Mm. Now, I'm not too convinced that, especially at the ports of entries, and that's, I'm even talking about the... The main ones. The main ones, the recognized ones. And then we have quite a number of unapproved routes mm. into, the, into the country. So I think that it's imperative that we, have, we look at that. I think the last time I was here, I sort of gave an example of when during the... Um, the registration process, the easy uh, photo registration process has uh, happened recently, whereby we actually went to North Tom, for instance, and the bodies were left open, right? And it was left open because it's politically expedient for a particular party so that people across mm. the border will come in and register, you understand? And so when some of these things happen, and then you also hear some kind of rhetoric I see that the government is actually doing something to sort of stem this particular scare of Ebola. Mm. Then it's, I mean, it's very contradictory because they're saying things that need to be done. And even at our, uh, I mean, uh, points of entry whereby um, immigration officials are saying they don't have the right equipment to basically uh, make sure that they would be able to screen these people when they get in, right? Uh, do we have all the... Um, uh, supplies in place if it so happens that something like that happens. Recently I hear that uh, government has basically voted some funds for various hospitals across the country but then we need to ascertain if they're actually ready or not. So it's, it's well and good but I'm sure that we can do more. Now what scares me is the fact that we've had cholera in the last few weeks mm. or months and it's actually taken the lives of over uh, I mean, I mean, 6,000 people have been afflicted and it's taking lives of quite a number of people mm. to into the hundreds. So if we are not able to stem that, right, and there's no uh, sense of urgency, even in that sphere, then what would happen to us when Ebola comes in? So mm. I think that uh, we can use the cholera situation as a test case mm. to sort of find out if well and truly we are ready or not, mm. you know. So we could do more. Um, I also feel that in terms of the education aspect of it, the public education aspect of it, we need to ramp it up a little bit. And then people are aware that the very things that would, 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 would make somebody get cholera, for instance, right, has some kind of correlation with Ebola, for instance, because it's all about uh, sanitation and how you sort of interact with people and shaking hands and, you know, exchange of fluids and all that. So these are things that we need to identify and then get to the bottom of mm. it. And there's always a tendency that most of these public education is actually done in English, right? And maybe it's, it's imperative that we go down to the local languages and get to explain these things to the people. And I'm sure they will appreciate it even more. <laughs> but, 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 but that's a very incisive point that he raised, especially when we have many of those porous borders in communities where the literacy levels may not be up to speed. But uh, do we think that a scenario he created in his observation, that perhaps because we feel that um, the scare of Ebola is a bit abstract, is not close, because we've not had any infection I, of a case even recorded. Perhaps the urgency and the sense of it is not as visible as we would want to see. You see the interesting thing, when Chum was making uh, his analysis, analysis, he could have done it better, he has done it better, I'm not mm. going to take it away, but to smuggle in the issue that the borders were left ajar 
during the registration period for people to come in to do registration because those are just examples we're citing. Because no, he did it's needless. You're replying because it, it sounds it is, political. It is, it is needless no, because when we are tackling because it's true because I was no, there. No, no, no. Um, yeah, you, that is um, your observation. UTV, if I were UTV, also there, UTV if I were also there, I would have also said that it is not true. You understand? So what I want to say did is you that go observe, I did didn't go to okay. Nigeria. What I want okay. to say is that when issues are national, let's look at them dispassionately in that direction. It is needless for him to smuggle in the, the explanation that the borders were left ajar for people to come. He's just in giving an example then. To give, no, to, 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 come, uh, to come in because uh, they, 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 sus they suspect those people once to register and it is going to be to the benefit of a particular political party. In this case, it's the NDC. I think it's below the belt. No, I shouldn't I, do that. No, no, no. I don't think. I no, but expedient. certainly, no, 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 <laughs> my brother. You know what I mean. You mean what by implication? <laughs> it implies. Yeah. Well, okay. So I think that, yes, we might have not been prepared. And then it looks abstract, yes. But I think that it's no man abstract him because it has become pandemic. That is one. The second thing is that it is only by the grace of God Amen. that we've been surrounded by Ebola Amen. and all the crises that have come in they've tested to be negative let us give thanks and praises to God we are not an island and we are no more pious or religious than the <laughs> other but it's God's own choice but interestingly too um, we have some people in Ghana here who are also going about hunting for Ebola, Ebola virus to come and spread in Ghana who here. told you I will, I will, I will give an example those are speculations. So yes. <laughs> like no, no, no. That, I, 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 will not, I, will, I will not allow you to make that point because no, no, no. those are speculations. Let, let, me, let me learn. If oh, I don't learn, you say that it is this. Look. No, I don't want you to mention it at all because I, that's very speculative. That, yes, but allow me to learn. fear and panic. No, the issue is this. <laughs> you remember when the, I think the laboratory technician, or is it the pharmacy assistant who met in uh, Kofurudia also? There was a, a social media that they use, I think through WhatsApp, where a voice came with a That has been debined, creating, denied creating, by the pharmaceutical creating, society of Ghana. Creating uh, panic and fear. You see, even the impact of it, even outside, people wanted to come within that period, friends of my call, but when they heard that they had to withhold their, their coming for some time on, uh, for the issue to be, to, be, to be addressed, it was done. I hope that everybody has taken the hook, line, and sinker, and we are going uh, in accordance with them. We are going to ensure that the precautions that we are all being told to observe wherever that we find ourselves, mm. we should pre uh, pre uh, observe them diligently. The second thing he talked about cholera and so on. I think cholera is a shared responsibility that all of us, first and foremost, your own hygiene mm. must be sacrosanct. You don't need government to ensure, to tell you that wash your hands, do A, B, C, D. And we know the, 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 the Cholera is an issue of uh, taking fecal matter and so on. Dr. Denzel have come out to tell us that it could be tied to the general sanitary conditions and so on. And I think that everybody must be on board. The interesting thing is, I just heard, I like to, yesterday I heard the news about the fact that cholera treatment in this country is free. Supposed to be it's free. No, no, listen. It's, it's supposed to be free. I am coming. But, we, but we've had some patients being... The patients complain because illegal money was extorted from them. And yeah, the Metropolitan uh, uh, Medical Director for Accra. Accra came out and said it was free. I even heard it from nurses, first of all. And from even the Ghana Health Service. Yeah, to... from the like, general hospital nurses who were telling patients that it was free. But the issue they are having is that sometimes when the patients come, they should tell them that it's free. That uh, because the, uh, the cholera, since when it gets you, they need to put more than four or five drinks, depending on the, how the body has been emaciated and so on. They'll put more. So when the patient is lying down, he observes that more drinks are on him, they get out without completing the, mm. the run of a treatment. But as a question, I ask, because all these, all these, all these observations you're yeah. making, it just responds to what Eric Chum raised. I asked a question, inherent in his observation yeah. and also uh, in, in my question is yeah. the fact that do you think that as a country, we're holistically attaching a lot more seriousness to the subject of Ebola and whether, because it is abstract, yeah. we think that we've not recorded a case. Do you think we're attaching a lot more seriousness to it? We're attaching a lot more seriousness to it. The government has come out to identify uh, areas that will be uh, especially reserved for uh, quarantine purposes when it comes to that. The government has also re released an amount of over 100,000 for the centers to be uh, put in order. 
there's an amount of over six million that they've used to import paraphernalia needed for the health star to be used in uh, examining mm. uh, issues that suspected. Do you know the areas so where we're supposed to have the quarantine centers and emergency? I don't know them fiscally, mm. but it's not a problem to know. I know when you call to any you know, of the regional health uh, centers and even the political artists. You're a notable person in your society and certainly. you don't seem to know. And no, so you can issue, just imagine, you can just imagine the situational, no, no, the no, situational no. state, the yeah. situational state of the ordinary Ghanaian yeah. who would not know where a quarantine uh, he need not section, know. He doesn't that, need he to doesn't know. Need to know. What, what, what need does he to need do, to know then? What you need to do is but to but report the case. Mm. If, you, if, they, if the symptoms show that they are lacking uh, what you call Ebola, then you are uh, removed from that state. To the current but Timo, your point has been made. Now, need, now, yeah. now, Eric, we, we have to get to a certain state where those assurances would need to be given beyond the stakeholder information that is always given by the media, etc., in the form of educa educative pieces, etc., and say, well, these are the pinpointed areas, and these are uh, emergency lines for you, and this is what everybody needs to do. Do we have that very euphoria surrounding that's, us about? That's exactly what I was talking absent. about. Mm. Uh, it's absent. You understand? And, I mean, sometimes um, my brother here and his... Uh, Timothy. His his, his, uh, Timothy and his colleagues are a bit, <laughs> more, a bit defensive. Now, you know, in one breath, they, they want to talk about national issues, and then if you're making proper critique, which is basically objective critique, uh, they, they don't like it. The truth of the matter is that, like you said, he doesn't even know where the... I need not are. to know that. Right. Issue. Now, so if you don't know, <laughs> and then there's somebody in, in your constituency, <laughs> for instance, who... He wouldn't call it the MP that, that he's having a that, You go to the hospital. It happens that there's a <laughs> suspected case. I would know that you can go to the uh, Tamale um, General Hospital. But just look at the distance between Tamale and Bosa. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's Bosa. Bosa, no. Well, is that, is that not <laughs> your, no, no. Yeah, it's not your constitution. Tam yeah, that is my exactly. constitution. So my point is that. But an Ebola the, 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 uh, what's it called? The uh, education of it should go down to the, to the bottom. To the, right. to the grassroots. To, to the grassroots. Lo the local and then level. we all know that. They're saying things that you can get the Ebola true, which is basically eating game and bats and all sort of things. Which means that as the people now, as we speak, there has to be some kind of indication showing that government is doing something to even, as it were, in an interim, prevent people from doing that. It, it can happen. You understand? But I can bet you that if you can you walk through all the chop bars and <laughs> restaurants in this country, people are still winning lily. Eating no, no. all of these things. They chop us recently too late because of the Ebola scare. They did wish me. No, but what I'm saying no is that we need to be game. more. We need to be more proactive, right? And what scares me is the fact that, and then I also make, I mean, a linkage between that and the cholera issue is that we are still the, the case is actually left Accra and it's gone to other parts of the mm. country, right? So if we cannot do that, what gives you the the confidence, the, the confidence that we will be able mm. to? People need yeah, to be yeah, comfortable. That's, that's my point. No, no, no. People need it's to be comfortable not, with the mindset that it's not necessarily, we're, we're covered. It's not necessarily a government issue. But government has to show leadership. Yeah. Because we have uh, institutions and we have mm. agencies that are meant to be dealing with mm. these But Eric, as far as leadership is concerned, I believe that the National Health Inch uh, the Ghana Health Service, uh, the Ministry of Health and the Allied Institutions, we, we, we have various committees in place that are doing a lot more work. And, and, and now we even have universities and the other tertiary institutions and even down to the basic level taking certain precautions as a result of the level of education that also seem to have been going on. I think the concern should be whether it's at the grassroots level exactly. or at the local and level. Because, because, because those are the areas that we have seen. There's, there's, there's a the very disturbing entry point. thing that happens in this country where somebody is sick and then they have to be transported to the hospital in a taxi. Or even you have diseased people actually being put in a taxi and taken to the mortuary. Right? Now, if things like this happen and somebody has been infected with Ebola, for instance, mm. or something that's communicable, right, and you transport the individual in a taxi, take them to the morgue, and then just as if they leave the morgue, right, you get, I mean, unsuspecting people actually jumping in, into the taxi. It's you're not, not, it's you're not, not a government, I'm not, I'm not necessarily <laughs> blaming government for this. But what it means is that as a people, as a country, we should have a plan. I mean, this is 21st century Ghana, right? So that some of these things that unnecessarily puts the people at risk, 
right, can be stamped, rather than always sort of politicizing it and then whoever it is that is in government at the point becomes all defensive of it, mm. right? Because it's inexcusable that. But he's not in government, so. No, no I mean, but his party is. His, his party is in government. But he's not in government. How come he's in government? He's actually running. No, you the see the uh, national organization. Yes, whatever that. Is. And <laughs> to, 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 to enjoy all the largesse. All right. That comes